Welcome. In front of me is a Qbot Note 50, and today I'll go over unboxing along with a quick look at the phone itself. Now, before I get started, I am going to quickly mention that I am a bit late to the unboxing of this device as it was released in August 7 of 2023. Uh, we have like what, March 2024? April 2024. Um, so yeah, a bit late to it. Uh, but in any case, I'm going to take a look at this device uh, from a perspective of buying it at well, right now. So popping it straight open. At the back, we have a little bit of info, as you can see. Let's ignore that for the time being. And get the device. Come on. The packaging is, there we go, not the most fun to unbox. So right here we get a device, if you yoink that out, thank you, um, you're welcome. Uh, we get a scratched up screen protector, that's fantastic. So it looks like this little pen flip that scratched it up, that's just great. But like I said, this is a screen protector, so it's not as bad. Then below that we have our paperwork, uh, our SIM eject tool, and another thing that Cubot does include is a tempered glass for the display. So it can actually get rid of the scratched up plastic protector because this is plastic and pop the tempered glass on that instead. Now next to that we have our charging uh, brick. This is only a 10 watt. Our, below that we have our Type-C to Type-A charging cable, and Type-C headphones. So there we go. I'm dropping that back in here. And moving it out of the way, let's get a look at the device itself. I'm not sure if that is a power button or not. Or is this a power button? Okay, the other one is a power button. So that's a pretty crappy design, I would say. Taking off the case, you can kind of see we have a fingerprint sensor. That is just a fingerprint sensor. It doesn't press whatsoever, but this is a power button. And then we have our volume markers right below our SIM slash SD tray. Now, taking a look at the display itself, let's uh, talk about that one. So this is a six and a half inch display with a resolution of 720 by 1612 pixels, IPS LCD display running at 90 hertz of fresh rate with a 82% screen to body ratio and the pixel density of about uh, 269, nice. Um, so the display right here is nothing special. Now it's uh, gonna note, the fact that it comes with an actual 90 hertz refresh rate is actually pretty decent. Now flipping it over, okay, trying to press these fingerprint sensor as a to lock the device, but to be honest, this kind of this is not good design, as I would typically hold the phone like this, so my thumb actually rests on the fingerprint sensor, which is where you'd expect it to rest. When you're trying to lock the device, you have to shift your hand. Uh, to the point that it kind of is unnatural, at least to me. So yeah, that's pretty dumb design. Uh, but anyway, let's, let's just flip it over. We have a dual camera setup at the back, which you can see right here. And the main camera is a 50 megapixel wide sensor with PDAF and then 2 megapixel macro. So in reality, we just have uh, this, this camera right here at the top and this one shouldn't be really counted in as 2 megapixel macro is going to be outperformed by the 50 megapixel wide sensor, making it absolutely freaking useless. Um, so... I'm gonna point out this is nothing new. Uh, a lot of manufacturers, even the like Samsung, does this shit. So it's not like this is coming out of nowhere. They're all trying to just scam people, giving them bullshit little sensor, uh, typically macro or depth, that basically contributes uh, in no shape or form to your photos. Uh, but it just kind of fills out the count. I'm surprised that there is no point uh, oh two megapixel depth sensor or some bullshit like that. As for instance, there is one on the X70. We have a point, point 0.3 megapixel sensor. It doesn't even specify what it is because it's not like it's going to matter what it is because you're never going to use it. Phone doesn't use it probably whatsoever. Uh, when it comes down to macro, it's a little bit more usable. You can actually select it in the, in the camera settings. Uh, but again, you shouldn't because uh, 50 megapixel, the normal uh, camera that you will use for all the photos at two times zoom will give you a better result 
sharper image with a better contrast and all that stuff and resolution compared to the dedicated macro. Now, um, continuing on into the internals, actually, let's uh, get to that. So we got a, a 5,200 milliamp hour battery inside and it can charge at 10 watts, which is pretty underwhelming for such a big battery cell right here. Uh, we also have a Unisec T606 processor with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Now that storage can be expanded further using a SD card, which you can see right here. Though by using an SD card, uh, you will not be able to use dual SIM. So you can either use two SIM cards or one SIM and one SD card. Um, now, that being said, the 256 with 8 gigs of RAM is the only option you have there. They're not selling any other like, versions with higher storage or anything like that, which I would say it's fine. 8 gigs is uh, sufficient enough storage for a candy bar device like this, and uh, the 8 gigs will also get you through. So both of those are fine, 256. Uh, and additionally, if you need more than 256, uh, you can always just pop in an SD card. Now, moving on. Uh, the device is being powered or running on Android 13, so that's actually pretty nice. Now, right now, I think the newest Android is the Android 14, which this device should actually get an update to, as it was released in August uh, 7, 2023. So it should probably get to Android 14 update sometimes soon, maybe already. Uh, would need to go into the settings and check out if there's an update. Um, and possibly it could get even to Android 15, though I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. Okay, so last thing that I didn't mention is the front-facing camera, which is an 8 megapixel sensor. Now, that being said, uh, with this device, you can record videos at 1080p 30 frames. Again, nothing really special. And the device does fit under the very budget category of about 130 euros. So it's like very low there. And we do have something that kind of makes it a bit worth it with the... Uh, relatively new Android that is on here with the Android 13 and uh, the 90 Hertz refresh rate. Though, obviously, additionally, the eight gigabytes of RAM is also a plus considering this is a very cheap device. Uh, but other than that, um, the, 10, uh, the 720p resolution right here will be a little bit of a downside considering this is a decently sized display. So 720 just might look a little bit, uh, a little bit pixelated for some people. Personally, I don't really see that much of a problem with 720p resolution, especially when it comes down to a price like this. And this is basically what you would call a burner number that you can just drop into the pond and not, you know, cry about it that, you know, you broke a phone, uh, you just get a new one. So yeah, it's fine in that aspect. So anyway, there we go. So that is the Cubot Note 50 and it's a pretty okay, uh, really really budget device it's one of the cheaper ones that you can get uh, and it offers a pretty decent i would say value for the money as uh, in terms of just specs solely i never really used long-term cubot so i don't know how their os actually how well it works uh, how reliable it is so that is something that you would need to test out yourself if you're interested in even doing so uh, or maybe you already know uh, obviously in that case you can make up your mind yourself. But with that being said, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.